Welcome back to the workbench. Today I'm taking a look at this. The Perpetual Calendar Wooden Kit from AffordableModelKits.com. Join me as I take a look inside the box and build this to find out what it's actually like. Hi, I'm Matt and you're watching Model Minutes. Before I start the video, a quick shout out to my patrons. A massive thank you to you for all the support you give my channel. To find out what patronage means and the perks it gets you, take a look at the links in the description of the video. So today, the perpetual calendar from affordablemodelkits.com. They have sent this to me free of charge for the purpose of review, so all opinions do remain my own. I've not been paid to say anything here, but if you would like to get one, take a look at the link in the description where you can get your own. So on the outside of the box, we've got a nice image of the completed product. Over here it gives us the product code and it also has a three star difficulty. So this implies to me that it's going to be moderately difficult to build. Down in the bottom corner it's a jigsaw symbol, so that implies everything will slot together. Gears, so it should work or rotate. And there's 52 pieces and there's dimensions here. If we flip over to the back, we get some more images of the front, side and rear and also a parts list that tells us what's actually included down the bottom there. It does state here that this is not suitable for anyone under the age of three. So let's get this piece of card off and you can see that we've got a nice cardboard box which will be quite easy to recycle at your local recycling centre. So open, upon opening the box we are met with the wooden components, a QR code for something, instructions, and another little box inside the box. This is like boxception here. Let's get that out. Ah, and here we are. Those are the little dowels in there. See that? Cool. Is there anything else in here or is it just padding? Nope, that's just cardboard padding. So you can use this cardboard for other projects, which is what I might end up doing with it, or simply just recycling it. So for those of you who are regular viewers on my channel, you'll know that I like to look at the instruction booklet first. So we've got a slightly odd size booklet here. As you can see, it's not sort of A4 or A3, it's sort of in between. But the front cover is printed in color and it's a little bit glossy. If we turn over onto the first page, we've got some warnings and maintenance instructions saying that you can use a gentle cloth to clean it and make sure you don't put it anywhere near fire. And also at the bottom here, a bit of fault finding in case there's anything that's not quite working correctly when you've built it. We then move on to the inside of the booklet and it goes from being a glossy booklet to being a matte finish and it's just black and white. At the top of the page, we've got a key to the different symbols you will encounter during the build. Down here we've got a part list and then a little tip in the corner over here just states that if you need glue you can use glue but you have to provide that yourself. But you shouldn't actually need glue because it's been designed to slot together. So I'm not an expert at this sort of kit, I wouldn't know exactly what to call all of these pieces but we start off the build by adding different wooden, uh, different wooden components into various different sections and then joining them together as we complete the build. Gradually progressing through the instructions, we'll add different gears and different cogs as we go in order to build up the product until we get to stage 12, where you should have a finished kit. So 12 stages, if we compare it to the other model kits I normally look at, 12 is sort of about right for a skill level two or so. Down the bottom here, we've got instructions on how to use it, how to read the calendar. The idea being that this calendar sits on your desk as a nice ornament, but it's also functional, that you can use it to look at different dates in the future. So you set the year dial over here, and then you turn and tune the month dial as well. And then that can give you the different days of the week. So you could look far into the future and know that on such and such a date, in the year 2020, it will be a Tuesday, for example. They've thought of everything, so it even tells you how to figure out leap years. 
And then on the last page, the inside cover, there's also a couple more kits that you can get in the range. A treasure box, a locomotive, an air vehicle, and a tractor. And you guys know that I love trains, so I'll be quite interested in getting one of these. And then progress onto the back, we've got a few more bits of social media. So, let's look at the actual components. As stated before, we get some dowels. These are just straight up normal dowels and you'll be indicated in the instructions as you go through when you'll need them. They use the one-to-one -one scale markers so that you know which one you need to use. And then here are the wooden components. So what I'm going to do is a little bit different to normal. Normally I record my build and then go away and edit it and add the audio in afterwards. But because this all simply slots together, what I thought I might do is build this as I go and record it at the same time and see how it works out. So the first thing I'm going to do inevitably is remove the plastic from the outside. So, let's have a look. One, two, and there's number three. Number three is a tiny little sheet. Look at that. This has all been laser cut on a laser cutter, which obviously uses a laser, and it heats up the various areas and eventually cuts them out. So as you can see, the wood here on the edges has been burnt, and that's obviously because of the high, the high heat generated by the laser cutter. And I can already feel some of these parts wanting to fall out. So it looks like they should just press out as we go along. One thing I would also like to mention is the wood feels like it's quite high quality. It has got a little bit of a bend in it in places, but it feels very smooth and I can't feel any splinters, so that's quite nice. Sometimes you get this sort of kit from other companies and they're not as high quality wood. And I would just like to say, I've just found this hanging out underneath the kit and it's a bit of sandpaper, so you can just smooth off the edges as you go. So let's see if we can make some progress on building this kit. So the first thing I need to do is find C1, which are these little tiny pieces over here. I need to have three C1s. So just push them out from there. It might be handy to have a tool, such as a little fine screwdriver, to just help you do this, because this is a little bit fiddly. There we go, there's two and three. So those three are out, and I need A1. So as you can see, they're all labeled. A1 is here. Let's just try it from the other side. Ah, so you can see just to hold it in, they've just added a little bit which hasn't been burnt. So there we go, just a little bit of pressure with a knife, and that will help release it from the wooden holding sheet. So the C1s, they all go into their little slots in here, like that. Do they go all the way in? Yes, they do go all the way in. Oh, there we go, like that, you see. So we push those in there, and then we need A2. A2 is a larger piece, and I think I've identified it here. This is A2. So again, there's a few little, little tiny bits here which need to be just a little bit of pressure just to release them. And gently, for, you don't want to press too hard because you could damage this as you do that. You don't want to snap any pieces because then you would end up gluing it and it probably wouldn't fit quite as well together. So now that I've done that, it goes, see the A1 part we've just done goes into the bottom of the A2, like that. He says with a little bit of difficulty. A little bit of persuasion needed. There we go, it's gone in. We also need the dowel. We need the big dowel. And that needs to be pressed into the hole. And it goes in that way up. Just gently push that in. And I believe it goes flush like that. So you, can, you can't see it protruding from the other end. So hopefully that's right. Now we need to move on to get the C2s. So I'm just going to oh, drop everything everywhere. Just gonna use my screwdriver, a cheap screwdriver, 
no bells or whistles, just push these ones out without losing them. You need six of these for this step. See, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go, six C2s, and I need A3. A3, big one here. Here's the big A3, and that one's come out quite easily. And the C2s fit in these slots. What I have noticed as I've done that is that some of them aren't sitting quite as flush as they probably should be. So just push them down, make sure they're all the way in, because you want a nice sturdy kit when you've finished. There we go, they're in there now. And then that is joined by A4, which is over here. As you might be aware, I'm building this just before Christmas 2019 and hopefully you're watching this just before Christmas 2019. Or maybe just after Christmas, I think probably before. I hope everyone's ready for Christmas, all your presents are bought. If you're still looking for ideas for Christmas presents, then this would be a good one. I'm having quite a bit of fun doing this. However, obviously if you're watching this now, you probably missed last post for Christmas. So <laughs> it'll be a belated Christmas present, won't it? Birthday present though, no, not bad. Let's try and get these out without breaking it. What you can see on uh, A4 actually is they've used the space available to them and they've put some of the other ones inside because they actually need removing. Because A4 is actually just this ring. So I've got to take some care here not to break it. I'm going to have to remove that central ring now. Let's see if I can do that without breaking it. It says with difficulty. I mean, the whole reason they do this is so that it doesn't fall to bits inside the box as it's being transported, because that's the last thing you want, is it to open the box and everything fall out and you lose it. Obviously, this is not the easiest of, because the uh, tolerances are so fine, it's a little bit difficult to get them out as, as we go without, I don't want to press on too hard because I don't want to run the risk of breaking it because it's so intricately designed. I also don't want to put the knife through my fingers. And I also don't want to break any of the teeth because obviously it won't work properly. Whilst I'm here, I'm just gonna take out these bits as well from the central piece of wood. There we go, got that one out. That one was tricky, wasn't it? There's the other tag. There's one, so there's three little bits. You've got to just have a very careful eye and spot them. And press down carefully in different areas so that you don't, I'm just worried I'm going to break these pieces as I do this. You've got to be so careful. Maybe that's why it's like a three star difficulty because this is, the, this is the hardest bit. It's not the actual assembly, it's the removing it from the rest of the wood because you don't want to run the risk of breaking it. Maybe a flat head screwdriver would be a good idea. So again, these have got little tabs on just on the sides there. It's like some of these pieces want to come out really easily. Some of them don't want to come out at all. Let's get back to where we were. So we've added A3 and all of these little bits on here. So we need to pop this one on the top. So again, it just slots into the relevant hole. Take your time here, because you don't want to run the risk of breaking them. Nice and gentle. Just go around as well, because you want to make it even. You don't want one to be bent out to the side and not locked into place. There you go, and then you can just gently go around and squeeze them all on. That one doesn't really want to go on. There we go, he's in there now. Gently go around and persuade the pieces in. I mean, so yeah, they've designed this so that you don't need glue, everything fits quite snugly together. And then on the step here, it's got a QR code, scan for motion assembly instruction. Well, I'm not going to do that, you can do that yourselves. Now I need B1, 
a couple of A6s, which we got off the middle of the other one, and the A5s as well. And these were very difficult to get out. I've, I've spent about 10 minutes off screen just getting these four components off of their little sheet. So, the A5s insert upwards from the bottom with an A6 in the middle like that. Let's get that in that hole. Hmm, this is a bit fiddly. You can see that it's designed to have a little gap in the middle so that it should squeeze into the hole, but it's being very stubborn. I wonder if you need tools for that. It doesn't say you need a specific tool. It has got a little excla exclamation mark there, so I will find out what that means, exclamation mark. Special attention in assembly. Special attention. Okay, so pay attention to what you're doing, I guess. Which is this. I'm just I'm just doing this. Maybe it's got a set way. Oh, uh, there we go. I figured it out. I figured it out. I'm trying to put it in that way, which it doesn't like. It has to go in that way. Do you see the difference? I'm trying that. It doesn't work. It goes in that way. So. Very simple, just me not really paying attention. And if you look at the instructions, it actually does have them depicted facing that way. So that was me not paying attention. But there we go, so I've got a couple of gears and they rotate nice and freely. That's good, isn't it? Just make sure they're all in. Right, next ones, I need the C3s again. Right, so put the A5s to the side somewhere safe so they're not gonna get lost. Find some more C3s, which are on this sheet here. Put that to the side. It wasn't C3s we were using before, was it? It was C1s. These just pop out of it. So some of these pop out, not a problem. Other ones pop out, very difficult. A8. A8. Nope, not that one. That's not A8. That is A8, that big one there. See, and that just, the big ones come out so much easier. They just, you know, sort of spin and rotate and out they come. That's so much better. These little ones are so fiddly. I do have a little bit of experience of laser cutting myself because I did a bit of that at university when I was much younger. But um, I haven't done any in a very long time. It's probably all changed since I last used a laser cutter. But there we go, C3s are now in their correct places. I need an A7. Let's find the A1, A7, this little disc. Let's get that one out, he says, there you go. I might as well get the other one out whilst I'm here, because I probably will need that. So the A7 goes on top of here, carefully. And it goes all the way down, nice and gently. Nice and evenly as well. You want to apply pressure as evenly as you can around the outside of that. And then you need a nine, which is this cog here. And is this going to come out or is it going to be difficult? Oh, it's all right. My hands are a little bit sore, actually. You can see probably on the ends, they're getting a bit sore from doing this, but we'll persevere. That goes on as well. A nine over the top. So these are the ones I put in just now, are more like spacers. And then this one goes on the top, keeps the correct distance. That one went on perfectly fine because they're the ones that have aligned everything. And that's that bit done. Right. Now, are we gonna start adding other stuff? Stuff that we've already built starts going together now. So this one goes on here, I hope. Ah, <laughs> look at that. That's pretty cool. That's nice, I like that. And then we need a B4. So the B sheets. I don't really think we've had anything off of here yet. Oh, something just fell off, do you see? So some of them come off, not a problem. Other ones come off very difficult. And B4 is this very nicely, very nicely detailed one here. All the numbers are put on the outside. So I'm gonna have to be super careful getting these ones off now because I don't want to ruin any of these. These are the 
ones you can see when you're using it. Oh, that that took it. That one that one tag was holding it all on. Right. The B4 goes on top in a very specific way. It goes on like that. Gently push down. That's it. There we are. And then the left and the right were hidden. The L and the R that were on there before now hidden behind this. That's very clever. I like that. Now I need to take this one, which we built earlier, and this one, which we also built earlier, put that on top of there, and then that on top of there. Right. Is that right? Everything sort of lines up then, like that. Okay, now I need a C4 and a B5. So the C4s are here. Is it just the one C4? Looks like it. So gently pop that out. A C4 and B5. B5 is going to be one of these. B5, there it is, it's that one there. So C4 goes through this hole here carefully, and then goes in that groove. There's a groove there, and it slots into that groove. Is that right? I feel like that's right. Although it hasn't, actually, it hasn't told me to do that yet. It has just told me to do this. That's as far as it's told me to go. It hasn't told me to insert it into the actual model. Right, so put that to one side, put that to one side. Let's find the next bit. P2, so that was one of the little dowels. I need that. I also need a B6 and a B7. B6 and B7. Well, this is B7 here. That's B7. With all the B8s and whatever inside are there. So let's get that out. They're not needed at the moment. And a B6. Where is a B6? B6 is a here. Little tiny ones inside this bit of wood. So let's get that out. That's out. So this is all one step. We're on stage eight now. This is all one step what I'm doing here. So the P2 goes, we have to turn it over. P2 goes in there. That was easy. B6 goes in there, not that way around. That way around? Can't be that way around, must be that way around. That way around, yes. Goes in that way around, right. And then B2 and a B3. B2 is this piece here. That one came out quite easy. And a B3 is this sort of circular washer piece. And is it going to come out? Yes, there it is. Right. So B2 goes that way up and sits on top of the dowel. Is that right? That goes there, that goes there, that goes there. And then B3 goes over the top of the dowel. I sh right, okay, there's a, there's a message in this. There's a little, oh, I've taken it out. So in the instructions here, you can see that it wants you to make sure you don't put it in the top hole or the top groove. You want to put it in the bottom of the groove. And I'd obviously put it in the wrong bit to start off with. So I'm just going to move that and then put it in the right slot. So do pay a bit of attention with your thing as you go. And then that is about right, like that. So you should be able to see that hole there and then flip it over, as it says in the instructions. Right, I feel like that doesn't come all the way through. I feel like it goes like that, maybe. Okay, so we've got our big main bit and the bit we got earlier, and I said that that bit goes in that groove. And I was completely right. That's exactly where it goes because that tells you what the day is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc., and then it lines up with the numbers. So that's in the right place. Now we need to take this bit, which we just assembled, and install it in the correct place. 
which is about there and there is this little hole here is where this dowel goes. So I was right, that has to be flush with the top there. So the dowel protrudes all the way through and it slots in there, if you can see that. We are currently at step 10, so we're not far from finishing. Here I need to get some B8s and put them on the sides and they act as the sort of locking in mechanism. They stop everything from falling apart. So let's find the B8s. They must be, oh, they're here. They were in the middle of something earlier. So we'll get those out and they come out. Well, that one came out really easily. That one comes out really easily too. And that one, there we go. And not so much with that one. Oh, there we go, get it out. Cool, spare bit of wood. Could use it for something else. So these bits go on the outside like that, I believe. Get it in the right place. I think this is where you really start to see how well the design has been made on this because everything just slots together. There's, there, isn't, there hasn't been any need for glue at, up till now, I haven't had to use any, but just getting everything to fit together through friction, that's quite impressive. I mean, I, I haven't built any other model kits. I mean, you wouldn't see anyone like from Airfix or Ravel really making anything that is this intricate and supposedly works, you know, with uh, just slotting together. So we're nearly we're nearly there. This is a bit fiddly, just getting everything lined up as you go. It is a bit bit of a hassle. I'm just wondering if I'm doing this bit right. You see, they've, they've uh, made these little extra gaps here, which compress as you push the part in. So it does actually need a, quite a bit of pressure to get it to fit in there properly. There you go. Like this one here, I haven't actually put that one in properly. I want to have to slot that one out. Right, you've got to give it a bit of a push, there we go, to get it in there. Okay, so one more bit to go in there. Uh, that way around, the other way. Everything should more or less be in the right place now. Come on, in you go. It's a bit harder than it looks. I know it's just a matter of pushing it in, but actually they put up quite a bit of resistance. Ah, that one's in, and the other side. Click. That was satisfying click. We're nearly there. So that is done. Stage 11, we need B13, which is this one here. Just pop that out. Uh, B12, which is right next to it, which is quite handy. And that one pops out as well. A10, we'll get B11 and B10 out whilst we're here because we will need them imminently. And B9. Actually, this step 11 has got a lot going on in here. Look at all these parts that I need. This is the same step, this is all step 11. I need A10, so off the other sheet, get that one. And I would just like to point out to you at this moment in time that after I've removed this piece, he says, struggling to actually do so. Yep, I'm gonna have to put the knife on that. After I've removed this piece from the sheet, the A sheet will be completely empty. There'll be nothing left on here. It's a bit worrying because some of the little sort of snapping sounds it makes, I think to myself, is it actually like just the, the holding piece snapping or is it the actual part I need snapping? Bit of a worry, but I got that one out. We're there now. B13, which is the circle one, goes into B12, which is this one here, like that. Then that goes into A10, that way around like that. And it should sit nice and snug, I think. Yes, it should. It should go into those little grooves with a little bit of persuasion. There we go, we're in. Then this goes into B11 with the interesting hieroglyphs pointing out. There we go, a little bit of force needed. Again, you can see there's a little hole here that compresses as it goes in. 
just to give it a bit of sort of friction. B9 is this one and the holes need to, the sort of the etching needs to face upwards. And that one's going to be, there we go, in, we're in. And then that all goes on to B10 with the triangle pointing that way. And again, you can see the little sort of grooves. So they've made them slightly wider than they need to be. So it just sort of pops into place. See that, oh, something went flying off then. That snapped a bit of the wood there. It's in, it's okay, I haven't broken it. It just sort of, sort of took a little bit off the sides. We're okay. So probably should have worn goggles for that because I wasn't expecting that to happen. Okay, so number 12, step 12. We need to put it on the back of here. And it goes in there. And that's it. Are we there? Are we there? I think I'm there. Is that supposed to spin around? I feel like I've not done something right. It just goes on. It just it just say it just, just goes on. There's, there's nothing there's no dowel to hold it in place. Right. Okay. Well, I think I'm there. I think I think I've done it. I don't think I've missed any steps, but I am a little bit concerned because I've got all of these C3s and C2s and A5s. I've got a B8 here. I've even got a little bit of dowel. So have I missed something or are they spares? I feel like they're spares, but I'm not entirely sure. There's even actually something still in the B. There's some, there's some left in the B sheet over here. I've got a B3 and a B6 left over. So this makes me question whether I have installed everything correctly. But I guess we'll just give it a go and we will see what happens. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and figure out how to set it for Christmas Day 2019. Okay, so the first thing on the instructions is to turn the year disc to 2019. So 2019, this is, the, this is the year disc in the middle. See how that moves by itself? So what I need to do is set it for 19. And for some reason it seems to stop there. Does it not go any further? Does it not go all the way around? No, it doesn't go all the way around. It's because we've got this stopper in here. So that is your maximum amount of play that you're going to get. So we'll set it to 2019, which is there. To find, we need to fine tune and then lock. And then you need to move the month disc to the month. All oh, right, so I've moved that. So that does sort of lock it into place. So you push that in like that, and then you rotate the month. And that's not rotating. I've done something wrong here. Right, that's locked in. I cannot move that one now. And then you rotate the month so that I get it to be... What's the month? The month is that one. The month is... That's, that's the month is in there. Right, move the month disc to the month. Turn one, check the calendar. Note the year disc cannot be rotated right now. I can't move the month disc any further. Why can't I move the month disc? Should I be able to move it? Right, I figured out why the month dial wasn't rotating. And you'll remember at the very beginning, I said that some of the wood looked a little bit bent. It had a little bit of a bow in it. I didn't think that would be a problem. But what I have discovered is as I've been turning this, I've managed to get it to turn. I thought, oh yeah, there, there goes the month dial. That's fantastic, it's turning. Brilliant, not a problem. And then when it gets to this area here, it locks up and now I can't move it. What I've discovered the problem is, is that these ones here on these two ends 
are actually locking in. You can see that they're bowed and they're going into the little grooves and that's why it's not turning. So when I get to this point here, I have to put both of my fingers in underneath and gently raise them up and turn at the same time, which is quite fiddly. There we go, got it to go. So now we're moving. So let's see, now that I know what the problem is, if I can set it for Christmas Day this year. So let's get the instructions back. And the first step is to turn the year disc to 2019. So the year disc needs to go to 2019. So we move the year disc to 2019. So the year is over he here, 2019. And I feel like I've done something wrong again. I can't have done something wrong again. That's not traveling all the way like it was last time. Have oh, I put it in the wrong place? Oh, right, I figured it out. It's because this one behind moves that. So I need to move that. So there we go, so that moves it. So that goes to 2019. So those need to be moved at the same time in order to get the right year. So you could keep going to get, I don't know. Oh, I've locked it in again. This is frustrating. There we go. So we keep going. So 2020, uh, 2020, you get two 2020s there. Keep going. 21, 2022. Okay, so we figured that out. In order to get the right year, you need to rotate the back plate and the front plate at the same time. Now I've lost my instructions now. Right. So first, turn the year disc to 2019. And 2019 is there. Right. So then we lock that into place, like that. We're using this little one here. Lock that into place. And then move the gear to the fine, oh, I did that. Move the month disc to the month. So we need to find the month. So it'll be the 12th month. So we got to keep going without it getting stuck. There we go. There, 12th month. And the, that should be the date there. So Christmas Day is the 25th. And it is on a Wednesday. Which is right, surprisingly. I had to think about that then. Christmas Day this year is on a Wednesday. So the 2019, the 12th month, that one there. Just rotate it around to so the 12th, 2019. On Wednesday the 25th will be Christmas. So you could project, so you could predict what the date would be on any particular date. So I'll just pick a random one on what will June the 2nd in 2028 be. So let's see if we can find 2028. 2028. 24, 25. 28, 2028, 20, and then June, February, March, April, May, June 6. So we need to find number six, lock that in so we don't lose it. Number six, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. There we go, six, 2024. And what did I say? The second is a Sunday. Well, isn't that fantastic? I can predict the dates almost forever. And it comes on this lovely little display stand like that, and it actually stands up and works. So it turns out that I didn't need all of these extra bits. They were just extra in case you broke or lost any. So that's pretty cool. I haven't actually ended up needing to use this either, uh, which I could do in a few places just to take off some of the little rough edges, but actually it looks all right straight off the bat. So, what do I think of this kit? I love the concept. I love the idea of having this calendar, which I can now predict the future effectively for, you know, forever. Find out what day is when. I think it looks really cool on the, uh, on the desk. I love the fact that it's got these gears and everything rotates and it just looks beautiful inside there as it turns. That looks great. I mean, you can't really see it from that side, but from this side, that looks amazing. Until you get to this point. 
which is where the wood has bowed and now they're stuck and I have to lift it up and I have to turn it again. It's something that is manageable. It's something that I can live with. It's just a little bit frustrating because I wasn't expecting that. And I suppose this is probably something that is going to be inevitable with this sort of kit because you can't really control the fact that the wood will probably bow or bend over time. But it is quite noticeable actually that this piece of wood has got a bend in it whilst I'm looking at it. I love all the little bits of detailing, I love the little etched parts in it, and I love the fact that I didn't use a single piece of glue in this. Uh, probably could use a bit of glue on the back there because that's very loose, that's going to fall off, but I suppose that probably is part of the intention because you don't want it to you know, be stuck on there whilst you're trying to change the date because that would be quite difficult. You want it to be able to be removed. But maybe a little bit more friction on there would be nice. But again, I love the detailing on the stand. I don't know what these sort of glyphs or letters mean. So if you know, if you know anything about these, make sure you put it in the comments below. And generally, I think that this looks quite good. It's not a bad kit. It's, it's something that I wouldn't necessarily buy for myself, but actually now that I've built it, I've had quite a good time doing so. And it's taken me about an hour to get it straight off of all of those sheets and into the finished state here. If perhaps I was more into doing this sort of kit more often, it would have taken me less time. The fiddliest part was getting some of these little bits inside the various little holes that needed to go in and also removing them from the backing sheet because I found that some of them came out really easily and some of them didn't and I was worried I was going to break them but fortunately you get some spares so that's really handy. So generally this actually has been a very enjoyable build and I will look forward to putting it on my desk as a display piece which also has a function. I would like to convey my thanks to affordablemodelkits.com for sending this to me free of charge. As I've said before, if you'd like to get your own one, take a look at the links in the description because that would certainly help me out. Make sure you let me know what you think of this kit as well in the comments below. And I'm also eager to hear any suggestions you might have for any other builds or videos you might like to see. So feel free to post that too. All that's left to say is a massive thank you for watching. And I will see you all on the workbench again next time.